The top trait, what's the top trait that comes to mind for both quarterbacks in this game for you when um, you watch this film? Aggressive. And I love that out of a quarterback. These are not guys that are going to dink and dunk it. If they see an opportunity to rip your heart out with a deep ball or something down the field, they're going to do that. Um, it's caused some heartache for both of them throughout the year. They've thrown some more interceptions that you'd like to see your quarterback throw. But I love that aggressive attitude. You know, we're going we're gonna to rip your heart out, man. You give us a break. We're going down the field. We're not going to dink and dunk it. We're going to try to get you. You know, you, you, Matthew Stafford, obviously with Detroit, didn't win a ton. Um, were you always a believer in, in Stafford that this could happen, that he could be a Super Bowl quarterback in, in the right situation? And how much do you buy into a quarterback's ability to win and elevate even in really difficult circumstances like Stafford was in with, with Detroit? Um, I tell you, I have great respect for Matthew Stafford. Uh, and, I, and I did see this type of career for him when he was drafted. I mean, him and Joe Brewer were both the first picks in the draft. So obviously a lot of people thought they had the great, innate, God-given talent, the arm talent, the physical skills to play the game. But not everyone has what, what you need to have, your belly, your heart, and your mind. Those guys have shown to me, especially Matthew, through the years, because it's hard when you get your butt kicked every week <laughs> and you get no respect. You know, it, you kind of lose some confidence, maybe even in yourself, but he didn't. He didn't. And I, I have an office at NFL Films, and we have players wired, like, every game. Now, the best thing that I would do is come in and listen to wirings. Some of the stuff will never leave my office because there's stuff I know that never gets out. But we actually put some of this tape out there when he broke his shoulder. You might remember, he was in the huddle after the play screaming. Shoulder, separated, broken shoulder. He stayed in the game. Through a touchdown pass. I'm thinking, this is the kind of guy that, you know, this is what a teammate is. I'm going back out there for my guys. You know, I, that's what I love about the toughness of Matthew Stafford. He had the talent, but that's the leadership that when teammates look at that, they go, oh, yeah, I'm following that guy. And Joe Burrow has a lot of those same attributes. I mean, he's a silent, like a little kid assassin. You know, <laughs> you, think, you look is. at Joe, you think, that kid should be uh, playing high school or something somewhere. But, man, the players love to play for him. He's tough as nails. For Burrow to do this much this soon, having missed time last wow. year with the injury and everything, uh, are, are we exaggerating when we talk about, uh, as, as uh, non-players, the moxie and that swagger and that leadership? Or does he have something beyond what a lot of guys we're watching have? Well, I, I think what we normally do this week, you know, we talk about the two quarterbacks that are in the Super Bowl and how many are they going to win? You know, I mean, it's just it's, it's who we are. You know, a couple guys that have great talent, and this game usually does showcase great talent. And some of the guys never get back that we thought would win three or four Super Bowls. You know, there's only one Tom Brady, Joe Montana, you know, that won Terry Bradshaw that won the multiple Super Bowls. It's hard. I played 17 years. I got to one and lost it. It's hard. So we're always going to elevate the guys that get here. But I think clearly, you know, Joe Burrow is going to be around for a long time. You know, Matthew Stafford now has been around for a long time. But with the weapons he has now in L.A., he could be back here real soon again.